I've wanted a six degrees of freedom robot arm for some time. I finally got one, the High Wonder X-Arm 1S. By using a kit, I can get something working quickly and then see what I need to adapt. It comes with some advanced bus controlled servos too. These are a step up from the nine gram servos I've been using in the previous videos. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. This is going to be a first of a set of videos exploring the Six Degrees of Freedom robot arm. Of course, I will integrate them with the Raspberry Pi Pico, Micro ROS, and ROS2. Today though, I'm going to focus on the hardware and the mechanics. Then test this using an excellent Python project by Chris Corson. So let's get going. Please like the video and subscribe for more. I really appreciate it. Most robot arms are six degrees of freedom, i.e. they have six points where that they can rotate. Um, and these in our case are going to be servos. So they rotate around a single axis. And we can see all the six ones here on this uh, simple robot arm. I could not produce these videos without sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Cancun, my favorite UK retailer for components. I love the ever-changing special offers of cool components. Cancun has kindly offered a discount of 20% on the first order for you, excluding tools and test equipment. Just quote Dr. John EA at checkout to get a 20% discount. So go check out Cancun today. Let's have a look in the box of the XARM 1S from High Wonder. So we've got a kit here of all of the parts necessary to build our arm and put that together. There's a nice base plate there. You can see the servos there and the gripper that we're going to put onto the end of the, the device. All of those are bus servos. I'll explain that in a second, but they require a control board to actually control that. And that's what we've got here. Now a robot arm needs something a little bit more powerful than just uh, 9G servos that I've shown in other videos. So in fact, this kit comes with some quite high-end servos. They're actually what they call bus controlled, which means that instead of us sending a uh, pulse width to the servo to give it a width, we're actually sending it serial communication. And to do that, we've actually got to put a control board. So there is a control board here that actually takes a USB or serial input and converts that into a signal going down to these servos so that they all know what to do. The other nice thing is they're actually chainable. So we can have connect one servo into the next, into the next, and that saves the number of cables running around our robot. And when we've got you know six servos and six cables, that's quite nice. So this robot uses LX15A servos and one LX225. The 225 is a 25 kilograms per centimeter servo. It's quite meaty and it needs to be because it's the one at the base of the arm that is actually going to lift the whole weight of the arm. The build instructions for the robot are actually a video that you watch along and it's a, an animation of building the robot. And that actually that works really quite well. It's very clear what to put together and how to put it together. There are some of the washers are left out of the video, so I did have to have a think about how they were to go. But the rest of it is actually quite clear and quite easy to follow along to. So here I'm just tightening out the bolts on the actual base of the robot itself. The video runs for about eight and a half minutes. You know, obviously it took me three hours to put the robot together. So you're doing a lot of pausing in between and rewinding and rewatching sections to make sure you understand what you need to get together. This is the first of the servos. Um, it's actually servo six, and it's going to be doing the actual total rotation around the Z axis of the robot. I was really pleased that the robot actually comes with spare screws um, in just in case you drop any on, on spare nuts. And of course I dropped one or two and uh, at least one had disappeared and I couldn't find it. So having those extras is really important. So here we're building up um, what is actually going to be the main pivot and the main 
bearing for the robot. So this is going to take all of the weight, not onto that servo, but onto this bearing for when it is actually rotating. And on top of this um, bearing, we're going to place a platform for the main servo, the really big one, the LX25. Um, That's going to actually hold all the weight uh, for actually lifting the entire arm. So that's the biggest servo we've got on the, on the platform. So here I'm going to uh, place that servo in its position. It's uh, quite secure in that bracket there. And then it's got uh, screws going in either side to actually hold it in place. And on top of that, we can then start building the arm. And this is the biggest of the com arm components and it's going to actually connect onto that LX225. And then a shorter arm that is going to go above that as the next component uh, of the, the arm as we move towards the, the grabber. And you see, that again, these servos actually fit really nicely into these uh, brackets which is good because any play there would actually start causing quite a lot of issue for the robot. And then we need a rotating uh, wrist joint just before the grabber itself and that's what we're building there and it's got then a uh, servo horn to go on to that. Now actually the servo horn there getting that in place and getting it at the right angle and attaching the uh, grabber. Actually, that was probably one of the most difficult bits of assembling this. It just is very tight and not quite at the angle you think it should be. So that took a little bit of playing around with. But now we've got those arm components together, we can actually start building up that arm, putting each of those arm components together and then adding that, that wrist with the grabber on the end. All of these servos are getting plugged in one to the other in the chain or going all the way down to what will be then the control board. And then finally we can put on the control board to control these servos. And that should give us then a working arm. The kit comes with a sort of PlayStation 2 controller that we can actually use to control the robot. And I did some experiments just to make sure that all of my servos were moving and that I'd actually connected everything okay. Responsiveness to the controller in servo by servo mode isn't exactly great. It feels a little bit uh, resistant, a little bit slow and a little bit jerky. Um, it worried me a bit that actually this was uh, too cheap and not a good quality arm for a bit until I then plugged it in and started using it with some real code. The robot does ship with some applications and some SDKs but it's all for Windows and I don't have any Windows machines in the house anymore so um, I needed something that's going to run on a Mac and actually Long term, I want something that's going to run a Raspberry Pi Pico. So I've turned to Chris Corsten's project. Chris has got a really great project here with both Python and some Arduino code in it for actually controlling one of these exams. And I've used this Python in this example here where I've just got it doing some really simple set of motions through the arm. And it is much more responsive and feels much more alive to actually move it through this Python code. Assembly of this kit was quite straightforward. Following along with the video to build it actually made building it quite easy. Lots of pushing the pause button and rewinding though. The 8 minute video took me around 3 hours to build. But then I was recording this video at the same time which added some challenges. I love the fact the kit has spare bolts and nuts. Of course I dropped a few on the floor as I built this and not all of them could be found. So spares are really helpful. The parts are well machined and fit quite well. I made a few mistakes by not playing full attention to the video I think. For example connecting these servos with the wrong length cable. Um, and that's a big pain because they're quite hard to pull apart. 
testing the X-Arm with the PlayStation 2 controller, I was a bit disappointed. The movement was jerky and did not really feel organically controlled. I was then really relieved to see how capable the arm is when controlled by Chris's Python library. Open source really is best. Now I need to get busy interfacing the X-Arm into my Raspberry Pi Pico. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, do hit that like button. And please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.